Please stand and let us join together to sing our opening hymn, number 571, God Loved the World So That He Gave. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this uh, fourth Sunday of Lent. We are doing this as our first official online Sunday worship. So you'll notice that as we go through this, I will keep uh, saying the same things I usually do with please stand, please sit, invite you to do that at home, um, just to kind of get you uh, doing the same things we're doing, get us all together, worshiping the same. Uh, but if, if you don't, that, that's okay too. <laughs> so we will begin as we always do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. I invite you now to take a posture of humility as we prepare for our confession. O 
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent is from Isaiah chapter 42. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they have not known will I guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. 
These are the things I do. And I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame, who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear you, deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as a servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness' sake to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 5. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of these things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible, for anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming, when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made some mud with saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been born blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for a second time, they called the man who had been born blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, 
We do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus had heard that they cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who may see become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, We see, your guilt remains. This is the gospel of the Lord. We now join together to confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together we confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated, and the children may come forward for the children's message. <laughs> okay. Scooch in a little bit. Scooch in a little bit. There you go. <laughs> All right, so how are you guys doing today? Good. Good. What do you see right now? <laughs> You see a camera. <laughs> not, not, much, not much else, huh? You don't see anybody here, right? Hmm, okay. You know, hold on to that for a second. Because our, our gospel reading, what I'm going to preach on today, is, is about a guy who was born blind. So he's never been able to see, okay? And Jesus does this really weird thing. Does Jesus heal him? Okay, that's not weird. Jesus always heals people, right? What he does is he, he, he makes some mud, and he puts it all over his eyes. If you wanted to make somebody see, would you cover their eyes in mud? Jesus would. <laughs> kind of strange, right? <clears throat> but the thing is, as we, as we hear this text, even though Jesus smears mud in his eyes, he's, he's basically kind of showing us that, you know what? Yeah, this guy, this guy has been born blind. He can't see. And Jesus is going to say, you know what? Even, I'm going to make it even harder for him to see. I'm going to put mud in his eyes. Oh, sorry. I'm going to put mud in his eyes. But then Jesus says, now listen to me. Wash in this pool, and you'll, be, and you'll have your sight. And so the guy does it, and he washes the mud off, and he can see. And the rest of the text is all about other people who they've been able to see their entire lives, but when it comes to Jesus, they can't see. They don't see what Jesus has done. They don't see that Jesus is God. And so even though this one guy who was blind his whole life, and now he sees Jesus, everybody else who sees, they don't see Jesus. They're actually kind of blind. 
See, and the, the whole point is that when, when we see Jesus, when he opens our eyes, when he gives us faith, we can see things in a new way. We see things through, through his cross, through hope and promise and truth and joy. So, like today, you know, our eyes, we don't see the many people in this congregation, dude, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Everybody's at home, you know. And we think, wow, we're, we're, we're not with everybody. But when we look through, through faith, through the eyes of Jesus, when he opens our eyes, we know that even though we might not be here physically together, Jesus has brought us together in, in, in spiritually, in love. And so even though maybe people aren't here right now, through his word, and they're going to hear his word too, that he brings us all together so we're never really apart. So though this church building might be a little bit empty right now with everybody at home, we're still together with them. We're still one body, one family. And we can, we can see this, and we can even look out into this and say, wow, Jesus is awesome. He's opened our eyes so that we can see him and we can see love. Pretty cool? <laughs> All right. Well, let's fold our hands and let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for seeking us out and for opening our eyes so that we might see things that you would want us to see, that, that, we can, that though our eyes might look out and we, we see people worried and, and afraid and even panicking right now, Lord, you've opened our eyes to see your cross, that though we, we see what's going on around the world, around the, the world around us, that we look to your cross and we see that you have already conquered death for us, that we have nothing to be afraid of. Help us, Jesus, to, to see with the eyes that you have opened, the eyes of faith. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, as we pass out our goodies, as we always do, we will sing our hymn of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, too often when we read Scripture, it is a very solemn affair. You know, you, you have to use your best preacher voice and take everything very, very seriously. Jesus said this unto his disciples. And they went and did that. (laughs) But you know, there are so many different types of literature in the Bible with different styles of presenting God's Word. And and what John presents to us today in our Gospel reading from chapter 9 of John's Gospel, the account of the man born blind, it it is truly presented to us as an ancient drama with little bits of comedy thrown in. And it's, it's set up in four different scenes. And so for, uh, for the message today, what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of walk through the story. Uh, but I'm going to present it more like the audience would have heard it and pointing out just the kind of the, the comedic elements about it. And honestly, I, I think having it a little bit lighter uh, is something that we, we could probably use <laughs> right now. So, John, chapter 9. Scene 1 opens with Jesus and his disciples who encounter a man who has been blind since birth. Now, right off the bat, uh, we we see that his disciples don't have that much concern for this guy. Because think about it for a second. You know, they've been Jesus for a while now. And at this point in John's Gospel, what have they seen Jesus do? They've seen him turn water into wine. They've seen him heal a child on the verge of death. He's healed a man who had been an invalid for 38 years. They saw him feed over 5,000 people, which is five loaves of bread and two fish. And most recently to this encounter, they saw him walk on water. They've seen all this with their eyes. And yet, when they see this blind man, they don't say, Hey, Jesus, you can heal him. We've seen you do it. You, You can totally do this, Jesus. You can give him sight. Oh my goodness, wouldn't that be awesome? But they don't say that. <laughs> no, they, they look at him and they say, huh, what's his deal? <laughs> so uh, who sinned to, for, to make him like that? Was it his fault? Was it his sin? Or was it his parents? <laughs> like, uh, all right. <laughs> well, Jesus answers them. He says, it was not this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now we're going to circle back to that at the end, so, so just kind of set that aside for right now. But what's, what's really fun is, is what Jesus does next, because it's, it's really unique. Usually when Jesus heals somebody, he just says, be healed. Or or he'll say, you know, get up and walk. Boom, done. Sometimes he doesn't even need to be near the person. He he said, like, this, you know, the person is far away, and they say, oh, he's better now. (laughs) And miraculously, they're they're healed. Jesus' healings are kind of hands-free affairs. But here, he spits on the ground, mixes it together to make some mud, and then he rubs it in the man's eyes which is odd. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> but, but Jesus is doing something that John is going to build on throughout this text, okay? Jesus seemingly makes it worse for this guy. You know, he, he's already blind, <laughs> and now he's obscuring his eyes even more. But Jesus tells him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Listen to my word. <laughs> and lo and behold, he, he does, and he comes back seen. For the first time in his life, he sees. The disciples, however, have shown that they can't see. They can't see past their own judgments of this man. So in this first scene, disciples blind, blind man sees. Scene two. And for this part, you really got to picture how this plays out as comedy. Okay? This is, this is good stuff. Because now it's the, the formerly blind man and his neighbors. The people who have seen him day in, day out. The people who know him. They see him walk by, 
And now they're confused. So they, 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 they start murmuring, like, oh, is that the guy? You, you, know, you, you know, the guy, the, the blind guy, you know. You know I, I think it's him. And then he says, yeah, 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 it's, it's me. It's like, oh, no, 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 it, it can't be him. No, 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 it's hot. You know what? It's got to be somebody who looks exactly like him, but it's not him. And he says, no, no, really, people, it's, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> And they say, oh, well, you know, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe it is. I mean, it does look like him, but, ah, he was blind. This guy, this guy's not blind, so it couldn't be him. And this poor guy, seriously, people, it's me. I know who I am. It, it, it's me, really, truly. <laughs> they say, oh, yeah, well, then how are you all of a sudden able to see? He says, oh, oh, the, great story. This Jesus guy he smeared mud all over my eyes. I say, mud? Okay. And then what happened? He's like, yeah, yeah, and, and I washed it off, and now I can see. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. mud, see, oh, I get it, yeah. So um, where, where is this Jesus guy? No idea. <laughs> Great, huh? <laughs> And they're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> See, the whole interaction is ridiculous. Uh, this is like the first century version of who's on first. Um, but what it shows is that, again, this, this man sees perfectly now. The neighbors, however, can't see. They're blind. <laughs> Even though their eyes are telling them, this is the guy, they refuse to believe it. They are the blind ones. Scene three, the Pharisees. Now they hear of this and they're like, oh, no, 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 we don't like this guy. Jesus, this Jesus guy, he's a fraud. He's a sinner. He did this on the Sabbath. Only sinners do that. Oh, my goodness. You know, never mind the fact that he actually healed this guy. He did something only God can do. They won't hear anything of it. They are blind to who Jesus is. They can't see. But this formerly blind man can. In fact, he's seen a little bit more clearly now. Because first, when the neighbors asked what happened, he said, oh, this guy, Jesus. Now the Pharisees ask, well, what do you think of Jesus? And he says, oh, he's a prophet. Hmm, okay. But the Pharisees figure, ah, oh, this guy's faking it. They need proof. So they call his parents to ask them. Say, is this your son? Was he really born blind? And his parents, <laughs> it's his flesh and blood. Like, well, yeah, that, that's our boy, and yes, he was born blind. But we don't know anything else. <laughs> don't ask us, because we don't know. says, you know, the, whoever healed him, how he healed him, we, we don't know. That's not our thing. Don't drag us into it. Ask him. He's old enough. Go to him. We don't know anything. His parents are blinded by fear. Fear of the Pharisees. Fear of what they might do to them when they say, well, Jesus healed them. So they're blinded by fear. They can't see. So the Pharisees turn back to the blind man, and that's where things start heating up. Okay? So they say, we know this Jesus is a sinner. Look, guys, I can't speak to that. All I know is that I was blind, and now I see. And they're getting flustered. Well, well, how did he do it again? <sighs> Seriously? <laughs> Come on, I already told you, and you wouldn't listen. Do you want me to tell you again? Do you also want to be his disciples? I mean, I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> so if, if you want me to tell you so you can follow him, sure, okay, great. And the Pharisees lose it. Oh, well, we're, we're, you, you might be his disciples. But we're disciples of Moses. You know, God talks to Moses. I don't know who talks to this Jesus guy. We have no idea where this Jesus guy comes from. But wherever it is, it's definitely not from God. And this is the beautiful moment where the blind man <laughs> really... He, it's time to take him to school. And he, he, he teaches them. He says, look, this guy made me see. How do you not know where this guy comes, that he, he comes from God? Clearly he does. Never in the history of ever has somebody who has been born blind been given their sight until now. And Jesus did it. There's no way he could have done something like this if he wasn't from God. Come on, guys, you of all people, you should know this. 
And these wise, learned Pharisees respond with, you're stupid, what do you know, go away. (laughs) Real mature, real mature guys. They refuse to see who Jesus is. They're blind. They just can't see. But notice, as we go through that text, that the blind man's man's eyes keep opening wider and wider. First he said, Jesus was this man who helped me. Well, now Jesus is a prophet. Oh, now, now he says he's from God. His eyes keep seeing more and more. Now we get to the last scene, scene four. Jesus seeks out this man and asks him, do you believe in the Son of Man? So, of course. Well, who, who is he? Point him out, and I'll believe in him. <laughs> and Jesus says to the formerly blind man, you have seen him, and I am he. And he believes and worships Jesus. He now sees fully Jesus is God. His, his eyes are, are opened all the way that he sees Jesus is not only a man, he's not only a prophet, he's not just from God, he is God. So John begins with a man who not only can't see, he's never been able to. Sight is a completely foreign concept to this man. And Jesus opens his eyes, not only so he can see physically, but so that he would believe. The disciples could only see the sin that must have punished him. They were blind. The neighbors refused to believe that this was the man they'd known for years. They were blind. The Pharisees were so caught up in their own nonsense that they wouldn't tolerate to see things any other way than how they wanted to. They were blind. It's the man who Jesus touches, he can see. The man who Jesus seeks out, he can see. The man to whom Jesus reveals himself as the Son of God, he can see. Through this text, everyone is in the dark. But the one man who has only known darkness his entire life, Jesus has brought brought light into his life. Now remember what I said in the very beginning, that what Jesus said at the very beginning. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as Jesus is here, there's light. As long as Jesus is with us, we can see what so many others are blind to. And I can't help but but just see how this text speaks so wonderfully to us right now. Because a lot of us aren't seen too well. (laughs) A lot of us are caught up in the dark. In fact, all we can see is isolation, distance, worry, fear, doubt, suffering, and even death. We're in the dark about what's going on. Who, who might already have this, this virus that's going around? How long is this thing going to last? What, what's going what's to happen? I mean, what will our lives look like? What will the world look like when we're on the other side of this thing? Is this a new normal? And now we can't even come to church. <laughs> the one place where, where we would go for relief from all this, for a brief rest from everything, to have a little bit of light shed on our darkness. What can we do? Where do we turn to? (laughs) We turn to Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who is still here. He is still with us. He is with you even now, whether you're sitting in a pew or sitting on your couch at home right now. (laughs) Jesus is with you. When his word is proclaimed, he is there with you. In your baptism, there he is, with you and in you. The light of the world shining in your darkness. He says, as long as he is in the world, he is light, your light. And he is most certainly here 
Are you baptized? (laughs) Then he is in the world. He is in your world, in your heart, in this moment with you, bearing you up, carrying you through this, ready to receive all of your worries and your fears and turn them into hope. Because he's promised that this thing won't overcome you. Ready to receive your doubt and and turn it into assurance because he has promised that nothing will ever take his love away from you. Ready to receive even your death and turn it into life. He has promised that though one day we will die, he will be waiting on the other side (laughs) with open arms to welcome you into life everlasting. This is the light that is shining brightly today. Through this sanctuary, through this church, through you, through your baptism, wherever you are, through your witness that your eyes have been opened because Jesus Christ has sought you out and made you his own. See, the world around us can only see what is going on right now and be afraid. They just can't see what we see. Jesus has sought you out. He has opened your eyes so you can see, that you can see the life-giving cross that takes away all of your fear, all of your trepidation, and replaces it with a bold and vibrant hope that come what may, The victory has been won. The light of the world is here and will be here for all of your darkest days. You have seen this light because you have seen him. Your eyes are open. Praise be to God. Amen. Now may the peace which far surpasses our human understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I ask you now to take a posture of humility as we gather together for our prayers. Let us pray. Open our ears by your word, our minds by your spirit, and our hearts by your grace that we may know and be thankful for all the blessings you have given us in Christ our Lord, especially the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Strengthen us in faith that we may serve you with all our body, mind, soul, and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Give to us good pastors and servants of your word who will serve us faithfully and boldly, even in chaotic times. Keep them safe, comfort them and their families, and raise up many more servants for full-time church work. Lord, in your mercy. Provide us with good and faithful leaders who will preserve the precious gift of liberty and protect the lives of our citizens. Give them special wisdom and help them to work in harmony in the midst of this pandemic. Bless the members of our armed forces and protect them as they defend us. Grant your blessing to all emergency and medical workers who continue to come to our aid in times of great need. Lord, in your mercy. Give us generous hearts that we may share what you have provided with those in need and work for the common good of all. Give us patience in our seclusion and comfort the lonely. Grant relief to the unemployed, the underemployed, the homeless, and all their families. Lord, in your mercy. Spare us from all calamity by pestilence, scarcity, and fear. Remember the sick in their afflictions. Calm those troubled in mind and keep steadfast the dying. Show us your gracious will, O Lord, and sustain those who are afflicted in body or mind until that day when you will bestow upon us new bodies fit for the eternal life you have prepared for us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort those who grieve and to build up those who mourn with hope for the resurrection. Remembering the faithful who have died in Christ, we pray you to bring us at last to be with them in your nearer presence looking forward to that day when we shall join in the marriage supper of the Lamb in his kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, teach our hearts to be content with your will and to trust that you will answer us with what is best for us and at the right time for our need. 
Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the time where we usually gather our offering. Uh, we ask and encourage you to, uh, to continue to practice good stewardship uh, by either mailing in your offering to the church office or you uh, will be able to uh, use our online giving portal to uh, give online. So I encourage you to continue to support the Lord and his ministry through us here. And now we will join together and sing our offertory. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Now, normally is a time where we would distribute communion, but uh, obviously the being uh, online only right now makes it a little bit difficult. But you will also notice that we have uh, left communion set up here. And I did that for a reason. I wanted that to be a reminder to you that, um, that the, the very gifts that we normally receive from the altar through communion are the very same gifts that we receive through his word. So when the word is proclaimed to you, uh, whether it's here live and in person or if it's watching online at home, through his word you are receiving the same gifts that you receive here. You receive forgiveness of sins, life everlasting, salvation, peace, hope, joy. All these things are yours. So I wanted to, that to be a constant reminder to you. And also that this, his, his body and blood was truly given and shed for you from the cross. And may he strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray together. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you so much. Helps if I have the mic on. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, for celebrating this uh, fourth Sunday of Advent, even, or Advent, of Lent, <laughs> even if it is online only at this time. Um, truly, I, I miss seeing you all here, and I look forward to the day when we all are able to join together and worship again. So I encourage you to uh, continue to watch um, on Facebook and YouTube. We'll be posting a lot of uh, videos and all sorts of stuff to keep you connected, uh, to keep you receiving the Word of God through this. Uh, church is not canceled. <laughs> it keeps going, uh, no matter what. So we delight and rejoice in that. So we will now close our worship today by singing our final hymn, hymn number 914, Light of Light, O Soul Begotten. <laughs>